Greetings and welcome to Prayer for America and the Nations. I'm Walter Zagarevich with Global Vision Ministries. And today I'm being joined by Reverend Tony and Marge Abram, the missionary evangelist to the nations. And thank you who have joined us all over the world. Thank you. And please share this broadcast with your friends, your loved ones, share on your social media. So that way more people can be touched, encouraged, and blessed as together we pray for America, for the nations, and for your needs. And if you have needs, do write us. We do take prayer requests very seriously. And this program is one where prayer is not just a slogan. We truly pray and we thank you for entrusting us with your prayer requests. We know that God answers prayer, and we know that he wants to answer your prayers. Welcome, Tony and March, and Merry Christmas to you and to all who have joined us. And a Merry Christmas to you, Walter, and to your whole family. And, of course, I'm just getting started. I'm going to be like when I was a little boy. We we celebrated Hanukkah. We celebrated this Christmas. We just passed on the 25th. We celebrated Orthodox Christmas because we had Orthodox people living near us. And then we also had two New Year's, one on the uh, December 31st and one on the 14th of, of uh, January. So as a little boy, uh, of course, we didn't get a lot of gifts like children get today, but I sure got a lot of nuts and candies and, and cookies and cakes. And as a little boy, I didn't mind having that. As a matter of fact, I still don't mind. What about you, Margie? Well, we, we didn't celebrate such a big Christmas because we had a big family, but uh, we we did enjoy our times when... Our sister, who lived in the city, would send us big parcels for Christmas with candy and nuts and, and all those nice things and even some beautiful taffeta dresses one year that we wore to the Christmas program, the concert, they called it, of the, of the town. And we, what, we were just so proud with these fancy dresses we thought were so pretty. And mine was in kind of a blue, light blue, and my sister's was emerald green. And we just felt so pretty. We felt that we were just so blessed. But we're blessed today because of Jesus. That's what we're blessed about, his wonderful love that he gave to the world. God gave his only son. Yes. Praise the Lord. And uh, we are also blessed to be on the program with, with Brother, Brother Walter. Walter. We miss him. Sister Nina, but I understand they have a they have a house full, which is good. And we we saw, and we're going to get to see the littlest one here after the program. The little Ezekiel, the little Ezekiel yes, that we and, prayed for, yes, for his health, and they have been blessed with little Ezekiel. Yes, and uh, uh, and I I had shared something from a couple years ago, uh, yesterday. I. <laughs> Of that we had, of course, we live in a trailer, house trailer, and uh, we, but back then, when your brother came with his family and our missionary friends from South America, there was, and my mother and my brother, and he had a couple of guests, we had 17 people, and, they, and I remember there was sleeping a lot of them on the floor, because they were with us for a few days, but I'll tell you what, it's a time of rejoicing as we praise the Lord. It's more than just uh, Christmas trees and and uh, lights burning outside. It's worshiping the Lord our God. And Brother Walter, it's great to be with you today and sharing a little bit on, on uh, global vision. And I thank God for the vision that God has given your wife, Nina, and yourself. And, uh, and what a joy it is to be able to share this on my phone with all my 1,650 friends. Praise God. 
Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, Tony and Marge. And uh, yes, um, those days when uh, uh, things were simpler, they were, uh, Tony and Marge were sharing uh, about. I remember as a child in, in Paraguay and South America, obviously it was hot during Christmas, but that was the only time of the year when we got some candies and that was in church. And uh, that might be hard to believe for kids today. <laughs> they could have candy any day of the year. But uh, it was just maybe the day we got uh, maybe uh, to eat uh, uh, the chicken that was uh, uh, that we had out there in the yard. <laughs> and so it was a day you actually had some meat and, and, and things like that. But I just wanted to say, uh, wish a happy birthday to Pastor Ben Shevchenko, my brother-in-law, uh, Pastor Ben, uh, turning 86. I can't believe that. Uh, well, God bless you, Brother Ben. Uh, you've been, uh, you've lived a li life of great example, not just as a pastor, but as a father and uh, uh, a, uh, a, a believer, a, a fine Christian, and may God richly bless you. Well, there are other birthdays. Sister Sarah asked us to wish her sister Susanna, I believe, a happy birthday. And we are praying for you, Susanna. And we are praying for all who have written in and asked us for prayer. We understand that uh, you've entrusted us with that prayer request, and we are taking it before the Lord. Well, we, um, of course, celebrated the birthday of Jesus. We don't know exactly what day he was born, because the Bible doesn't quite tell us that, but it probably wasn't on December 25th. The important thing is that we celebrate Jesus and his coming into this world for God so loved that he gave. There is no loving without without giving, and God gave the most precious thing he could give his only begotten son, Jesus, who came into this world and took on the form of flesh. I mean, I, it's hard to imagine leaving heaven and coming to earth in a time as when Jesus came. I had uh, uh, Bishop Vasily from Zaporizhia, Ukraine on yesterday. If you missed that broadcast, go back and watch it. But, you know, he said, God works and, and God shows up in inconvenient, difficult times. Jesus came during one of the most difficult times in, in, in Israel's history. They were under Roman rule. Um, Herod tried to uh, destroy Jesus by killing all the young children uh, uh, um, in, in that area where he knew that Jesus was uh, found out Jesus was supposed to have been born in. And so uh, it was not an easy time. It was inconvenient. They had to go to to uh to to nazareth they had to go to uh i mean to betlehem it just um it's just uh it, it, it is it is difficult to comprehend. Sometimes we want God to work things out in our time in perfect circumstances, but even so, God works in the midst of the most inconvenient and difficult circumstances. Jesus, not even having room in the inn to be born in, and had to be born in a manger. And so we sing about it, we talk about it, we paint little uh, pictures of that. But can you imagine if you had to be in those circumstances? And yet God so loved us that he sent his son in to this world in the very inconvenient moment in time in the history of his people. And yet God showed his love and Jesus uh, showed us, not only showed us, but paid for the price of our salvation. Isn't that right, Tony and Marge? <laughs> Amen. Absolutely. It's um, what, what the expression I, I even posted that I liked it so well. It's what, not the tree, not the gift beneath the, the tree, gifts under the tree, tree yeah. but the gift on the tree and which was Jesus paid the price for you and I. I mean, it's wonderful to celebrate his birthday. And even though we know that the 25th was an exact date, but we picked the day uh, uh, right in the beginning of winter. It's a good time to get together with the family and uh, hallelujah, but the great day is that that Resurrection Sunday when he conquered hell, death, 
<clears throat> excuse me, and the grave. Uh, oh yes, uh, when 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 the rock was rolled rolled away, and uh, no human hands even touched the rock. It was rolled away by God the Father, and Jesus came forth, and uh, that was the greatest day for humanity, the greatest day for you, for me, when he rose from the dead, conquering hell, hell, death, and the grave. And because he lives, we shall live also. But it's birthday time, and uh, we, we, we know that uh, for some, especially our uh, Orthodox friends out there they're going to have their christmas on the 7th and uh, that's all right i'm worshiping the lord every day and every day with jesus is what march sweeter than the sweeter day before sweeter than the day before Praise hallelujah the lord. and you had some scripture uh, to read uh, i know that's all right with brother walder Marge, read those scriptures. Praise the Lord. Yes, God gave his greatest gift to the world, his only begotten son. And last week we talked about how God had prepared a body for him. Jesus was with the Father. And as Walter said, the, he shared in the glory of heaven, yet he yeah. was willing to come down and told the Father he would come down and give his life for the world. Yes. And God prepared a body for him. And Mary had precious Jesus bore that little baby boy who was God, 100% God, 100% man, man. But he was God. And yet he left the glory he had with the Father. What a wonderful gift. And so I'd like to just read a few verses that go along with gifting. Praise the Lord. It's found in Galatians chapter six, and I'm reading from verse seven, which says, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers or the family of faith. And so, you know, this is a time where we receive many gifts and we give gifts, but let us not forget those that are in need and poor as we help those in Ukraine, help those in Israel, those in, in other nations that we see are needy and need the water of life, need food and bread. They are hungry, but let us not forget them. And this ministry that we help with Brother Walter and Sister Nina, the Global Vision Ministries, let us do good to all men, especially the household of faith. But not only that, they are feeding the hungry there in Ukraine that are not believers and many are becoming believers, praise the Lord. And the Greek word says, you know, do not be weary in well-doing. Weary means to be really spiritless, to be wearied out or exhausted. And it's the same word that, that was used when Jesus fed the multitudes. He said, they, lest they go away exhausted and, and weary and tired and hungry. And God, Jesus did a miracle there to feed the hungry. And not only that, we are to, when our enemy hungers, we are to feed them. And if they are thirsty, we are to give them water to drink. So this time is a good time to remember, to give to the ministry, to help Brother Walter and Sister Nina as they reach out to those in Ukraine and we reach out with them. You that are listening, if you can help, do that. Don't forget them during this season. During the cold, they're suffering. Many are still cold and, and they're hungry and they're coming to get food from these dear pastors and workers that are helping feed them. So let us not forget them. We are so blessed here 
in our country and you in your countries, you have food to eat and you have what you need and you know the abundance God has for you. You can just call on him and he will supply for you whatever you need. So today, as we pray and we minister to you and you reach out to the Lord today to receive his bountiful blessings. And he has, he has lots of, the, the 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 cattle on the thousand hills belong to him and the hills also and uh, those out there you've got abundance you've got presents that you may be taking back why not take the refund and invest it in in uh, people that are hungry yes. people yeah. that are freezing Free people that are in great need, uh, and you would be blessed. And let me say that uh, not just because uh, he is a friend, and he has been a friend, he and his wife, for many years. It's not just because uh, he, he's been called to this ministry, but because it would show the love of God. And that's Walter and Nina Zagrevich and with global vision no oh, we we appreciate this ministry and um i'm i i've been reading some reports just recently that uh, he had sent me and uh it's just wonderful uh, what god yes. is doing through this ministry and on christmas we need to think about what we can do for others it's not just giving presents so that you can get presents why not give expecting nothing back but i'll tell you what when you sow into this ministry you are going to reap and the bible tells us know them that labor among you and one thing you i can appreciate about walter and nina they know the people that they're they are working with in Ukraine and Cuba and uh, and Nepal, he knows them. They've been there with them. They worked with them. They've taught them, and they know them. And so the money is not wasted. It goes for what it has been given to. So, anyways, at this Christmas time, I remember the words uh, from the Word of God. Bless, it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Yes, amen. Let that joy come into your heart by becoming part of this ministry. Yes. And God wants to do great things. I know that he has done it for us, Marge and I, ourselves. Uh, we, we, we've we had some lonely Christmases, just the two of us. And yet there there we are, as I mentioned before, 17 of us in, in our house trailer celebrating Christmas. Praise the Lord. <laughs> my, I remember my Uncle Joe, he, want, he probably would have come, but he, he said there was no room in the, in the house, <laughs> no room in the inn. In. He was well, a little shy, too, to come yeah, around a, a lot of shy. people. But, but what a joy to celebrate. And, and we're celebrating right now. With Walter and and uh, uh, Nina would be with us, but uh, she they've got a hospital too. So praise the Lord. So brother Walter, thank you for having us here yes, today, amen. that we might just express our feelings and our appreciation. Uh, not just to you, we're our appreciation is is uh, pointed, uh, guided toward our Lord Jesus Christ, who came. He didn't have to do it, but he came into the world and he became a man. And he didn't, he didn't have to do that. But the Bible tells us that we have a high priest who was touched with all our infirmities, all our pain, all our joy. He became a man. What a wonderful God. And as a man, he took your sin. He took your penalty. He took my penalty, my sins. 
and he took them to the cross. And we can now say we are free when we receive his finished word. Hallelujah. I can just praise him on this Christmas season. What a wonderful Savior we have. And day by day, as we know him, the more we know him, the more we love him. The more we love him, the more we want to know about him. Because we are going to spend eternity with him. God bless you, Brother Walter. I'm glad you're going to be with us when we're there on that great day. Praise God. Well, thank you so much for those kind words, Tony and Marge. And uh, truly, uh, God has been good to us. And as Sister Marge was referring to Jesus feeding the multitudes, you know, he said to the disciples, feed them. They wanted to send them away. They said, look, you know, we don't have money to find us, uh, enough money to buy food in the store to feed all these people. And they were trying to figure out how in the world we're going to take care of these thousands of people that need to be fed. And yet, uh, as they gave that loaf, uh, they found the little boy with the loaves and fishes. It just wasn't much. It was his lunch. But God used that little and made a lot out of it. And the multitudes were fed. Well, you may be wondering, it's uh, end of the year. You, you probably exhausted your finances by uh, uh, buying gifts and so on. And yet, uh, let me tell you, there's no greater joy uh, than, than to help and to give and, you know, uh, in speaking with Bishop Basili yesterday, I don't recall if that was during the broadcast or afterwards, she says, you know, all the pastors here, pretty much most of the pastors have stayed and they are here knowing they're doing the will of God. And yes, it's an inconvenient, very difficult time. They're being shot at, you know. Um, and yet, he says, we are satisfied. There's a certain level of satisfaction because we're helping people. We're seeing lives change. We're seeing people coming to Jesus Christ that never would have come to Jesus Christ before. And our, he says, we're packing our church with uh, uh, two services, 500 each. They're feeding, uh, uh, they're giving out food to about 2,000 people a month in the church. And then besides that, uh, taking food to 15 villages. And I said, how are you doing on supplies afterwards? He says, we're actually just about run out. And I said, but you know, he says, we're just believing God. I told the people that we want to keep blessing you. We want to keep helping people. So you've got to pray together with us as other they're praying and believing God always provides, and uh, they're touching many lives. There's not only food and staples, but also firewood. Firewood is so critical right now, especially in the villages. And I'll try to post a little video of a dear old elderly woman in a village just being so thankful for the firewood that was delivered to her. And uh, it is a time when, as Tony and Marge have mentioned, people are freezing, people are cold in some parts of the world. And in that little bit of help, can go a long way. So if God stirs your heart, if God speaks to you, not Tony, not Marge, not to Walter, but if God speaks to you, and I'm sure God is speaking to some of you, we're not asking this for ourselves. We're asking this for those in need. Jesus said, feed them to the disciples. And that's the command he gives us to feed people, both the the spiritual word and the physical, uh, we're, uh, the, the, the physical bread. And uh, that's what we're doing. And as a result, hearts of people have opened up and many, many have received Jesus Christ as Savior. Literally thousands of people have come to know Christ as a Savior. And uh, and, and so giving that gift right now, uh, there are many outreaches in the region of Kharkiv. They've, uh, um, they've made an effort to have 20 children's outreaches with 20 groups of children and um, large groups of children. And let me tell you what a blessing it is to be able to put something in those children's hands. In some cases, just a chocolate or some candy. But in other cases, some kids had, that had no warm, warm shoes or boots or, or a warm coat, 
that was given to them and um, in other cities as well. And Nicopol Pastor Roman sent me a few uh, pictures and video uh, uh, last night, and they're just overwhelmed because they're trying to serve 730 kids. And uh, there was a ministry that was supposed to send some boxes with, you know, that they prepare from here, and they've done a wonderful job throughout Ukraine in this crisis. But they refused to send him these this time. And I said, why? Because they said, they said it's too dangerous there. And we don't want to uh, see people gathered to receive these and then get bombed there. But God provided in other ways. We sent some help there. And uh, praise God, these children are being attended to and ministered to. They can't get them all in one time. The church building only holds 120, but they pack one group after another. And they've done several groups already. They're doing some more. And we're helping with uh, in other cities as well with children. Being uh, during the season, it is so important to show them the love of Jesus. And you know what? They'll remember this for the rest of their lives. And during this inconvenient, difficult time of war, somebody cared enough to send them a pair of boots, a coat, a little bit of candy, and for them to experience childhood when it's difficult to re to experience childhood in the midst of war and, and hiding in bomb shelters and running every time there's a siren, air raid siren going off. And those are quite often. But let me tell you, uh, as I mentioned, these pastors said they are just uh, blessed and, and, and have the satisfaction of knowing they're in God's place at God's time. Yes, it's hard. Yes, it's inconvenient. But you know what? When Jesus came, it was hard and it was inconvenient. But that's when God manifests his precious uh, vessels to do his work. Um, isn't that wonderful? And I just want to thank Tony March, you and your ministry, because you've been an integral part of a lot of this. And it is your help that we that has helped us. And, and I want to thank other uh, ministries as well and individuals who have given. I want to especially express thanks to our friends in Taiwan, and especially Elam Christian Center and all of those who have given there because you've stayed faithfully uh, with us and with the people in Ukraine helping in this terrible, terrible time of war there in Ukraine. And I want to thank all of those. I can't I'm going to start mentioning names. I'm going to miss some, but I just want to thank everyone who has had a part, uh, Brother Dean, Sister Marcy, Brother Albert, others. And, and uh, But Tony March, your ministry has had a huge part in this. I want to express publicly here our thanks and thanks to your partners who have enabled you to do this. And let me tell you, it has not been in vain thousands of souls have come into God's kingdom. So yes, uh, it is a time of rejoicing. We're rejoicing in the birth of our Savior, and we are also rejoicing in that we're able to share his love with others, and especially children who are so impressionable. Marge, I think you've got something to say. <laughs> yes, uh, Brother Walter and, and Sister Nina, you know, we're so thankful we are able to help too. What a joy it has been for Tony and I. And then Brother Walter, when we hear the reports and see some of the pictures and the joy on the faces of people that are receiving some of the, these things that are so needed. You know, uh, I think, I remember my childhood, we were poor, but so were a lot of other people poor. But you know, the people would help one another sometimes like in the farming they would help each other and the threshing times and all those times they would help each other they would gather together and of course they were paid for the threshing crew and all that they were paid for their work a lot of them but some of them just came and helped and took food to those that were needy and so what a joy it is when we can share what we have cuz because we know where this these funds are going to we know if we can relieve some of their suffering and help them with keeping warm and having warm clothes and being warm uh we we remember times when it was cold in canada very cold winters 
way below zero. I think I remember way, I think I remember down to 50 something degrees below zero. It was terribly cold. The schools were closed and all that. But my mother kept us warm. We were a big family, but she always had warm clothes for us. So we were so blessed. Well, let us bless others like we've been blessed. God took care of us. He provided for us and he will provide for those and he will speak to us those of us that can help let us help and do what god asks us to do because jesus loves the world he died for the world and he wants to supply every need as people believe him he honors our faith oh we're so thankful as we are able to do these this help and assist in in helps in any way we can let us do it. Let us be, Lord, just be asked, ask God to tell you what to do, and he will speak to you. You'll be doing his will in providing in Jesus' name. Well, yes, and God, God did not see fit to give us any children of our own. Uh, we tried to adopt when we were young, but they always told us that we had not enough income to be to be able to adopt and uh, but uh, in recent years we have helped many orphanages and i know that we see the joy just like from ukraine and nepal and places like that we that we can see as global vision is now helping we can see the joy and the happiness when children are, are being ministered to, they're being fed. Uh, and uh, Marge and I, at this present time, our ministry is involved in over 20, uh, close, I guess close to 25 orphanages. Uh, we don't fully support them, but we are helping. And um, one, one orphanage, for example, uh, had 43 girls that we recently recently sent some money and they were there they are in Myanmar which is firm, former Burma in the last two years it's been like hell on earth for the for the people there like and the orphanage and they had to escape this this week this past week doing Christmas they had to uh, escape to the uh, Indian border, where they found some sanctuary for these children. And and we could go on with stories like that. Well, you don't have to look very far. You can just look at Global Vision and see what they are doing. And children are being fed. And it's very precious to us yeah. when we see this. And, and, you, and, and you can... You can have a part in it. Just pray about it and see what God will uh, speak to your hearts. And it is a joy when you see the expressions yeah. on their faces. Hallelujah. Now, there was a reason that Jesus uh, said, feed, feed the poor. Those that are hungry, feed them. If they're cold, clothe them. Yeah. And... Uh, I know that like last winter, uh, how many hundreds of stoves, wood-burning stoves that uh, your ministry, Walter and Nina's, have contributed in the Ukraine for those suffering, freezing people. You know, recently when the, the two of you were over there, and it was in in the northern uh, Spain. It was so cold at that because your school was at a place where there was a lot of children. And what did I hear? Not only were you guys freezing, you Nina said she had to sleep even with her coat on, a winter coat on to keep warm. And you and I know about that because in Ukraine years ago, you and I 
uh, were teaching at one of the schools in that town. I forget which town it was. I'm sure you know. Uh, yeah. You're a mastermind for people's names. <laughs> It was it was called it was called Krasnodarsk and now it's called Pokrovsk. Yes, it's Donetsk region, and we stayed at an orphanage where they were running out of coal. <laughs> yes, and we were cold. And the, the, what was so ironic was that that year I I bought a coat that was made for the Antarctic for uh, for the Canadian. Uh, military and i bought it in a surplus store for i forget what i paid for it uh wasn't that much uh, but it was good for 100 degrees fahrenheit below zero i, I mean i thought well this will keep me warm but i remember you and i in that orphanage before we gave them assistance uh we, I was wearing it inside. I know when you're inactive, you're you're you get cold, and uh, and uh, here we are holding our Bibles, studying, getting our lessons ready. But we were staying at the orphanage, and and we had gloves on, trying to read the Bible and get our message ready with gloves on. And here I am wearing that hundred degree below zero coat which by the way i gave away before we left the ukraine at that time and uh someone i'm sure kept warm with it and uh yeah i gave it to one of the ministers i believe and and here we are in that orphanage and then we found out the reason was they run out of coal and coal was expensive but you and i we scraped our uh good evening which is their money and uh, together that we had uh, our dollars and uh, we were able to buy coal for them but even with the with the heat i i I wasn't that warm but it did warm it up so uh, but here you see this this isn't something you just read about or even see on television you have trained personally most of these men and women in the schools of ministry. I know that I have helped you and that your ministry has trained over 5,000 workers in the ministry in soul winning. And uh, I'm I'm glad that our ministry has had some small part in it, But, but it's just wonderful that you know them because it's Bible, know them that labor among you. And I hate it. I know I don't like to talk negative, but I'm sorry, friends, <clears throat> you that are watching this, there are many, I don't know, I'm not saying they do it willfully, but instead of 100% or 90% of what you give go towards the ministry, 90% is used of for uh, their own their own use. their own use so i'm trying to think of the word there uh, to keep their ministry going and uh, rather than helping for what it was given for but in in walter and nina's case they know them they percy like Vasily, i know him too and uh, what a precious brother and he and his family and his ministry and uh, here, uh, Global Vision has worked with them. And then there, there is our brother down, Vitaly down in uh, Kharkiv, or Kharkov, like we used to call it, a Russian name, but Kharkiv, Kharkov, same place. And, and how from nothing, uh, over 100 churches were planted. And our ministry had a great great part in helping purchase uh, some some of those buildings and the thing is walder he knows them his ministry knows them they know if they're honest if they are sincere are they making 
the grevni or the dollar go further to reach and feed people and they're feeding people and you heard walter tell you how that the churches are full and running over yes they're coming for the for the bread and the fishes but they're hearing the gospel and they're being fed because jesus was concerned about feeding them spiritually and physically and and that's the ministry that global vision is doing uh they're involved in soul winning number one number two humanitarian work doing the work that jesus commissioned us to do walter i could talk all day about this but i got to turn it back to you i just wanted to say before we give it back to walter that Jesus said, in as much as you've given to the least of these, you've done it Amen. unto me. Amen. Just think about what that means. Mm. In eternity, we'll see <laughs> the rewards Hallelujah. given out, what we have given, what Amen. others have given, what you have given and sacrificed, Brother Walter, in your lives and left your home and family and you, you followed the Lord. And we did too. We prayed, not our will, but your will be done. And so if you've given, you're gonna it's you've done it unto the Lord. If you gave a cup of water, you'll be rewarded. If you gave them something to eat, if you gave them clothes, and you know, we took uh suitcases of clothes and, and coats and gave them to people. What a joy to watch those people put those coats on and and uh the, the people giving. Uh, that gave to us to give to them and we gave our own but you know God has been so good and we are doing it unto the Lord so whatever you've given you've given in the name of Jesus and you, Jesus said you've given it unto me oh praise the Lord what a joy to be able to give something back of what Jesus has done we could never repay him for what he has done for us took our sins upon his body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness his righteousness we are so blessed brother walter aren't we praise god we are and and um it is true it is more blessed to give than to receive and it may be hard for you to understand but try it do it. You cannot outgive God. Uh, you do it not expecting in return, but let me tell you, God will not be a debtor to any man. God will bless you. God will give you, uh, back unto you because he that gives to the poor lends to the Lord. That's what the Bible tells us. And you know what? As we were saying, Jesus said to the disciples, you feed them. They were trying to figure out how to do it. But let me tell you, you start doing it, God provides, God multiplies. And that's what we have seen. And I want to say it is not too late to make your year-end gift. Uh, you could write to Global Vision Ministries as long as it is, as it is, as it is postmarked by uh, December 31st. Uh, uh, we can, uh, uh, you could count it for your tax receipts this year. Your, give, uh, your giving to Global Vision Ministries is tax deductible here in the United States. And I want to thank you who have given, those who are contemplating the uh, uh, your giving. Uh, the needs are great. We're helping uh, many, many children's outreaches are taking place right now in Ukraine. Besides the the feeding and helping the adults, uh, which is crucial, especially during this time of the year. And as Brother Tony had mentioned, we were able to provide in a joint effort about 2,000 uh, stoves. These are fire burning stoves, and these were especially especially extremely important in areas where they don't have heat and uh, especially in towns and villages where, uh, where where they were able to survive using those stoves. 
but they need firewood for those cells. And that's been a huge need this year. And uh, I'll try to post a few more pictures. Some of that firewood that's being uh, delivered to homes, especially to people in villages. And it is so crucial, uh, apart from uh, all the other outreaches. But we're also working in Cuba. And what a blessing it has been to bless some of these pastors and churches. And they've used these finances we just sent to bless the people in their community and to put on children's outreaches, Christmas outreaches, uh, to and feeding the poor, helping the needy. And let me tell you, it is so such a blessing to see the smiles on these faces as God uses the, the, uses the little, because truly it's little what we give compared to uh, in, in, in when you look at how big the needs are. But you know, God has a way of multiplying that. And, and we try to be very wise and very strategic in our giving. And so it's not just these countries, we're working in Africa, we're working in uh, Nepal and India. And so we can only do this with your help. We were in Spain, we were able to uh, leave a little bit of help for there's 20 orphans that were brought from Ukraine to Spain because of the war. And they were living on uh, on, on just on uh, macaronis. That's all they had to eat. And we were able to give them a little blessing. We're hoping to, uh, to bless them some more here shortly. But you know, there are needs around the world and we cannot meet them all. But you know what? If you and I do what we can and others do what they can, let me tell you, God multiplies it and the needs are met. And so it is not too late to give. You go to globalvisionministries.org. Um, that's .org, not .com, but globalvisionministries, plural, uh, .org. Or you can write your check to Global Vision Ministries, P.O. Box 53. 377 El Dorado Hills, California, 95762. Uh, uh, this is uh, USA, of course. And so um, you can write your check as long as it is uh, written and postmarked uh, uh, by December 31st. Uh, we can count that for this year's uh, tax receipts. And if you give online, as long as it happens before the, uh, uh, the end of the year, that'll also count to your uh, 2023 receipts. But thank you. Thank you in advance to all who have given and who are giving and will give. May God multiply it back to you. Well, Tony and March, there are needs of people around the world. There are people that tune in from America, from uh, other parts of the world, from Canada, from Japan. And we want to pray for the needs of those out there. There are people that need healing. There are people that uh, during this time, during this season, it is a difficult time. Maybe they've, uh, they're missing their life partner. Their, their husband or wife may have passed away. Maybe uh, their father or their mother or someone that they dearly loved. And, and, and maybe this time of the year isn't the easiest time for them. There are people who are dealing with depression. There are people dealing with loneliness. There are people dealing with financial problems that they're trying to resolve. Would you... Please, Tony, pray for those people right now and, and pray for healing. There are many people who need a touch of God. How many people have written in and people that we know that are either uh, fighting a cold or a flu or COVID, and we want to pray for them right now. In fact, uh, my brother Adam wrote uh, a message asking for prayer for his daughter, Luba, who's been fighting COVID for a week uh, now. And I mentioned already, uh, we uh, Sarah asked pray for her sister, Susanna, and her other niece without mentioning all these names. I want us to pray for them right now. And there are individuals in different countries, wherever you're at, there's no distance in prayer. God hears God answers prayer. And so right now, before Brother Tony prays, and I've seen God work miracles. I've seen God heal the sick. I've seen the blind see, the deaf hear, the paralytics, paralytics walk after Brother Tony had prayed. And I want him to pray that prayer of faith right now for you. So put your hand on that phone or that computer screen right now, or put your hand where you're suffering 
suffering, and we're going to pray for you. We're going to bind that sickness. We're going to cast it out by the authority of the name of Jesus Christ, and we're going to pray for God's healing power to flow into your body right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, so, Brother Tony, would you pray? We declare Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord of our spirits, Lord of our minds, Lord of our bodies, and we speak the word of healing over all those that are oppressed, all those that are suffering under the evil hand of Satan who comes to steal, to kill to destroy, but we have the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, and we come against you, Satan. We stop you dead in your tracks. You cannot bring no more suffering because you are defeated, because he who conquered hell, death, and the grave declares, I am, I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the God who conquered hell itself. Hallelujah. Lord, we declare those words of Jesus and we speak to the sickness. We speak to the oppression. We speak to those that are even possessed and that in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, demons, demon influence, uh, devil sickness, uh, pain, suffering. Uh, Lord, it doesn't matter where they are. They could be in a hospice. They could be suffering in a hospital. They could be suffering at home. Lord, even as they are listening, we speak the word of healing. That nail scarred hand bringing healing, those precious hands being laid upon that baby, upon those children, upon those middle aged people, those young people, upon the old, and in the name of Jesus. Heal, cancer, die, healing, replace it, uh, for by his stripes uh, we are healed, uh, by those stripes we were healed, uh, and we speak healing, Lord, touch them, touch them organ, Lord, right now that pancreas, that bladder, Lord, that stomach, yes, that yes, heart, yes, Lord, be healed yes, in be Jesus' healed. name. Tumors, Lord, uh, Jesus those name. things that should not be there, remove Jesus them. Name. Those cancers die. Tumors Let die. them pass, Jesus Lord. Name. Let in those Jesus cancers name. pass, in either Jesus through the bowel Lord. or through the mouth. In Let Jesus. them let them disappear, Lord. Melt Jesus them. Name. Dissolve them. In, in the name, name of name. Jesus. Those word. brain tumors Jesus. go. That way which has brought on Lord. that stroke. In Let Jesus. that blockage disappear. In, in Jesus, Jesus name. name. Lord, Jesus. touch those ears. Open those deaf ears. Uh, loose the string of that tongue. Uh, yes, that Lord. stuttering spirit uh, that causes that one yes. to stutter. Yes. 
Lord, we ask that you heal. In Jesus, I say to you that are suffering with stutterness, stop in Jesus' name. It's just the attack of the enemy who doesn't want you to speak the word of the Lord. And in Jesus' name, that that acne, that that athletic of uh, a virus that they have on their feet, Lord, I ask that you heal in the name of Jesus. Those that have uh, bo body fluid, uh, yes. excessive yes. fluid, uh, let it pass. Let the swelling yes. of the legs, yes. of the heart, yes. of the, of, oh God, yes. in Jesus' yes. name, yes. heal yes. that sugar yes. diabetes, yes. heal yes. that yes. high blood pressure, yes. heal yes. that yes. low blood pressure, bring yes. normalcy, Lord. In Jesus' name. Lord, there's so many suffering pain. And we speak to pain. Pain, go. Go. Go with those tablets. Go in the name of Jesus. And let your healing power flow. Those eyes, those ears, that tongue. Oh, God, be healed. That throat condition. Yes, Lord, you God. see that one from uh, from New Zealand that we heard from uh, yesterday, Lord. Undertake for that those ones that Walter mentioned, each individual. In Lord, Jesus touch name. them In with Jesus your healing name. power. Friends, something's happening. There's a number of people being healed. And I say, why not you? Reach out. God is no respecter of persons. If he ever did it for someone else, he could do it for you. If he was a healer in Bible days, he's a healer today. Now, take your healing. Take it. That pain going out, go in Jesus' name. Oh, Walter, something is happening. Happening in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We thank you that you are touching, that you are healing. In the name of Jesus, we command every cancer cell in your body to die and come out right now. And we speak resurrection power come over you in Jesus' name. Lord, may your resurrection healing power just flow through that body, expelling every sickness, every disease, every cancer cell, and cause healing to come forward, cause the fighter cells to increase and to get stronger and to fight off that attack in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we speak healing. We speak health in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Oh, Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ right now for touching, for healing in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, we just thank you that by your stripes we are healed healed. We thank you that there is nothing impossible with you, and you are doing what we think is impossible in lives around the world who are watching right now. Just put your hand where uh, on that phone, on that uh, computer screen where you are watching on that tablet and say, I've received my healing in the name of Jesus Christ, and begin to test yourself, begin to put your faith into action right now. Believe believing that God has heard your prayer and God has answered your prayer. Now put your faith in action right now in the name of Jesus. With God, all things are possible. So put your faith in action right now. If you couldn't pick up that arm, just try to lift it right now in the name of Jesus. Not just was, but keep trying by faith. As God sees your faith, that manifestation will come forth Amen. and you will see what God has done. Well, thank you, Brother Tony, for praying for those uh, who need healing, who need a breakthrough. And, the, and oh, I just feel that God is moving. God is touching. Oh, yes, somebody's eyes are being touched, somebody's ear, somebody's neck. 
a heart condition. Yes, in Jesus' name, Lord, we speak healing over that heart, over that valves. Oh, yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus, stomach be healed, liver be healed. Yes, that cancer come out, leave Amen. right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, and Lord, that paralysis uh, in those extremities, I command that to leave and I speak healing and wholeness. I speak shalom over you in the name of Jesus. Be healed, be made whole right now. Oh yes, Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you are touching lives. We thank you that you're healing right now. Yes, right there in Japan, right there in Africa, right there in Asia, here in America, in Canada, in South America, in Cuba, in the in the in the Caribbean, in the Pacific Islands, the Lord is touching. Just put your trust in him right now. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yes, in the Canary Islands. Yes, they're in Spain. The Lord is touching you right now in the United Kingdom. Just believe, trust. God is touching. God is speaking into your life, and God is healing you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord, thank you for the renewal of our youth as an eagles. And Lord, we thank you for giving us strength, supernatural strength, in the name of Jesus Christ, clarity of mind. Yes, Lord, heal that brain. And in the name of Jesus, I command that brain fog to leave, clarity to come for depression, leave in the name of Jesus Christ right now. In Jesus' name. Brother Tony, there may be people that don't know Christ as their Savior or Marge. Would you invite people to receive Jesus and lead them in a prayer right now? And so if you don't know Jesus, just open your heart to him right now and invite him in. He'll come in, Sister Marge. Heavenly Father, we just pray right now in the name of Jesus, the one who came to give us life and life abundantly. We just ask in Jesus' name, you that are opening your hearts right now to Jesus to come into your hearts. What a wonderful time during this season. We celebrate Christmas, Christ's birth, for you to be born of the Spirit. So pray this prayer with me today in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. I come to you in Jesus' name. Come into my heart. I believe that you died for me. You died for the whole world because you love the world. And Father, we thank you that you sent Jesus right now to come into my heart. Be my personal savior. Let me know my sins are forgiven. Let me know that you have come into my life. Let me have the assurance of my salvation to know that I've been born again of the spirit of God. Lord, in Jesus' name, I ask you to come into my heart. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness, all things unlike you. I want to live for you. I want to be your child. Come into my life. I believe you died for me personally, and I'm going to live for you with your help. Thank you for your salvation. Thank you for your wonderful gift that you gave to me and i receive you right now in the precious name of jesus i will follow you i will live for you i will serve you with all my heart now in jesus name amen and if you pray that prayer follow the lord now follow him by by talking to him like a friend every day start it out with some wonderful words like, good morning, Lord, help me today. And second, let God speak to you. He speaks through the Bible. Start reading the Bible, uh, and, and, and especially the New Testament, which is God's will for you. And third, have Christian fellowship. Get into a church that's Bible-believing and testify. I know that when I was first saved, I, I almost lived. My, my greatest joy was to tell people uh, that I was saved, that I knew Jesus. And I loved going to churches that they had testimony services. 
where people would get up and tell what Jesus had done for them. And we're going to be praying for you like we do every day that God will help you grow in the things of God. You give and it's given to you. You gave your heart to Jesus. He's going to give you a whole lot more. Brother Walter. Praise God. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Tony and Marge. As always, we enjoy having you on here. And I want to ask those that are watching, please share this broadcast. Many people are in need of prayer. Many people are in need of encouragement. Well, this broadcast, we call it Prayer for America and the Nations, and we are praying for revival in America. We are praying for the nations as we pray for America. Pray for your nation. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray your kingdom come, your will be done in the United States of America. Father, we invite your governance. We invite your involvement. We invite your lordship and rulership over the hearts of men and women and children in this country. And Father, we say your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so we pray that for America. We pray for revival in this nation, in Canada, in Mexico, in South and Central America, in uh, uh, the uh, Asia Pacific, in Asia, throughout Asia, in Africa, in the Middle East. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem and we pray for the salvation of God's people as well as the Arab nations that surround them and the Palestinians. And Lord, we pray, we pray for Europe, that you would send a mighty revival to the European continent, to the United Kingdom, and Lord, to North, Central, and uh, Eastern Europe. And Lord, we pray for Ukraine. We pray for an end to that war. And Lord, we speak peace over that region and Lord, we pray for the salvation of many, many more in the midst of this chaotic war. In Jesus' name, we pray, and we pray that you would protect this nation from evil, from harm, and for those who mean to do good, who want to do, uh, rather, for those who mean to do evil. But Lord, turn that which the enemy wants to use for evil into good and save this nation. Oh God, we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. amen. Thank you for joining us and continue to join us Monday through Friday as together we pray for America, the nations, and for your needs. So tune in to hear words of encouragement, words of instruction, and prayer for your needs. God richly bless you. Thank you again, Tony and Marge. And remember, don't look at how big your needs or problem may appear. Put your eyes on Jesus. He's much bigger, much greater, and he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God richly bless you.